STEM enthusiasts, welcome back to Cameron's Lab, Dive In, the go-to podcast for STEM students. Craft it with passion by one of your own. I'm Cameron, your enthusiastic and ever-curious host. Buckle up for today's insightful episode. Ready to dive in? Last week Thursday, November 2nd, was a crazy day for me. Classes in the morning and afternoon, team meeting in the evening, the electronic specifiers first in women in tech and engineering event, which could be an episode in itself. It was amazing. And finally, I had the pleasure of listening to Dr. Joy Bulamwini's virtual book tour. Ah! <laughs> now, I've been following Dr. Joy since my mom told me to watch Coded Bias on Netflix. And if you haven't seen it already, please do. It's really good. And also, for those of us who don't know who Dr. Joy Bulamwini is, let me introduce her. She's a Ghanaian American Canadian woman who is a poet of code that uses art and research to investigate and highlight the social implications of artificial intelligence. Dr. Joy's many degrees hail from Georgia Tech, University of Oxford, and MIT. She founded the Algorithmic Justice League, a nonprofit with a mission to raise awareness about the impact of AI and equip people with research that allows them to have a powerful voice. Her research reveals significant racial and gender biases in AI services offered by major tech companies. She is an influential international speaker and advisor on algorithmic justice, participating in platforms like the World Economic Forum and the United Nations. As a creative science communicator, she has showcased AI failures in exhibitions and written op-eds for publications like Time Magazine. Dr. Joy is a Rhodes Scholar and the Fulbright Fellow. And she's earned recognition on prestigious lists like the Bloomberg 50 and Forbes 30 Under 30. With a background in computer science and a passion for pole vaulting, she is hailed as a key voice in the AI revolution. Woo, amazing. So of course, when I heard that she had a book launching soon and was gonna be hosting a virtual book tour to promote it, I knew I had to attend. The book is titled Unmasking AI, my mission to protect what is human in a world of machines. Of course, you know I already ordered mine, but it won't be coming till early December. Ah, oh, the anticipation is killing me. <laughs> and of course, one day, I would love to have the chance to interview or even meet Dr. Joy myself. So Dr. Joy, if you happen to be listening and you want to do an interview with me, I'd be most grateful. <laughs> but for now, the virtual tour and anticipation to receive the book are exciting enough. The event was set up as an interview of Dr. Joy by Karen Howe. Karen Howe is an American journalist who focuses on the impact of artificial intelligence on society. Now, before it even began, the screen showed a collage of faces, and it said, if you have a face, you have a place. The idea that having a face gives you a place in the conversation of technology, especially artificial intelligence, is so true. As Dr. Joy said, these technologies are shaping all of our lives. Our data is constantly being collected, whether we like it or not. And it's important for us to be empowered to speak up about it. Now, as I mentioned, I haven't had the chance to read the book myself yet, but Karen has. And she remarked to Dr. Joy about how she loved the intimate moments in the book the most. She describes them as a roadmap for change makers by showing intimate and personal moments. Basically a behind the scenes look at Dr. Joy's successes and struggles. One of those struggles being considering whether to, or not to stand out, to be a gadfly, as she says, in a community that constantly warned her of the negative repercussions to her career should she speak out about racial biases in AI, especially to speak out about the practices of big tech as an MIT researcher. Considering that MIT is funded by big tech, this was a risky and brave move for Dr. Joy and others like her. Transparently, Dr. Joy does say that it was true and her career has been impacted, but from what I can see, she's doing pretty great. As a black woman myself, and I'm sure many of us can relate, I really appreciate her for being so vulnerable about what most of us struggle with. This being having to think about how certain decisions or what we say will impact our future career. In fact, that's the journey of all women but especially women of color. 
Dr. Joy speaks about her experience as a Black woman in spaces like MIT, Oxford as a Rhodes Scholar, and more. This idea of privilege versus oppression, being an outsider within, which meant that Dr. Joy began to realize that her inclusion was often the exception. What I admire about listening to her describe her numerous negative experiences, such as being denied entry at the European Commission, despite being invited, is that she didn't wallow in it. No, she didn't think, oh well, it's always been this way, and let's just accept it. She thought of ways to invite people into the conversation, as her mentors, such as Megan Smith, once did for her. That is so inspirational, and not many people would be keen to give back and make a change after facing such adversity. The white mask is probably one of Dr. Joy's most famous parts of her research. While studying at MIT, she noticed that her facial recognition algorithm would not recognize her face without wearing a white, full face mask. She thought it was the lighting to change so many things, but no, it just needed the right skin color. That study led to the gender shades methodology, which has been used by many companies, but most notably Bloomberg for their dif stable diffusion. It's a text to image generative AI model. They use different skin tones and average faces to evaluate the model and try prompts such as high and low paying jobs. Unsurprisingly, lighter skin males were shown for the higher paying roles, while men with darker skin colors were correlated with lower paying jobs and criminal stereotypes. Dr. Joy and scholars like Dr. Sophia Nobles and Dr. Latanya Sweetie led the foundation for such innovative interrogations to be brought to the light of all these AI systems. The Unmasking AI book goes, also goes into how change is made. In Dr. Joy's case, she went from her research on gender shades methodology with the white mask to informing President Biden on what his next moves would be with AI. Wow. Like, how do you go from researching to the presidential round table? I can't wait to read all about it. As I said, as a student, especially, it can be hard to see how you go from researching in a classroom to later in a position of authority and knowledge on a subject. I'm in awe of Dr. Joy for being so transparent in her book. And as I said, I can't wait to read it. So before I close out, I wanted to talk about one of the things that stood out to me which was when Dr. Joy spoke about how her health has been impacted in all of this. To quote her, she said her body said no. I think that's one of the things that we tend to forget. You know, as we're making these boss moves, we need to look out for ourselves. Not only physical health, by doing things like sleeping and eating well, but also our mental health. And one of the ways that Dr. Joy mentions taking care of herself is knowing when it's too much and that it's time to say no. She talked about recently having to cancel on TED AI because she learned to listen to the warning signs from her body. And I appreciate her for being so transparent about it. I think more students need to hear about that as well. Now, I'd like to sum up my review with some of the lessons and insights that I gained from Dr. Joy in this virtual book chat. The first one is, there's no such thing as being overprepared. Being a young woman in tech means that your opportunities are not just for you. They pave the way for those that are coming behind you. So make sure you do it properly. The second one, speaking out about controversial topics like racial bias and AI may have a negative impact on you or your career, but doing so is so important and can make a huge impact on the industry. Just like how Dr. Joy's gender shades methodology is being used by big tech companies to evaluate their models. The third one is actually one of the most fascinating ones to me. Deleting the data isn't enough. We need to be asking companies to delete the models that they're training with that data. I was shocked when she mentioned that, for example, Facebook recently went through a lawsuit that caused them to have to delete a ton of data. However, they didn't delete the models that they trained it with. So clearly deleting the data isn't enough. Companies should be making sure that their models are trained on ethical data in the first place to avoid all of that. My fourth one is listen to your body. Listen when it tells you to slow down or it might do it for you. In conclusion, thank you so much for listening to today's episode. 
If you'd like to check out the full virtual book chat that I'm, review that I'm reviewing right now, I'll put the link in the description of this episode below. So definitely make sure that you check it out and also get your copy of Unmasking AI today. So I checked on Amazon earlier and I think that the next ones probably won't come till January. So get your orders in now is what I'm trying to say, especially if you live in the UK. Hi again, awesome listener. That wraps up another deep dive of Cameron's lab, dive in. Before you dive back into your day, see what I did there? Take a second to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Want a behind the scenes look? Bonus content? Or just some good old STEM fun? Follow me on my socials, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Cameron's Lab. And remember, every episode is a new adventure and we've got some really dives lined up for you. Don't miss out. Until next time, Stay curious and keep exploring.